All right, let's do it. Let's just go for it. We're a little early, but who cares? I'm set up. I'm ready to go. Hello. Welcome to the live stream. Happy Thursday. Um, whew. Let's start this off by talking about some rain. Huh? Happy Memorial Day weekend, everyone. We are here in the Pacific Northwest, and I don't know if you've looked at the weather that's coming in this weekend but it looks to be like this we're gonna have some storms pretty much all over oregon washington idaho montana everywhere um i had plans for the weekend to go backpacking um, in eastern idaho and as of now those plans are still on uh, i had a buddy text me who's coming with me he's from indiana illinois one of those two, both of those, something like that. And, um, you know, Chalk Basin, this hike we're going to talk about today, he was, he was going to come on that trip, but uh, we had to push it because of rain. Um, as you saw in the Chalk Basin video, possibly, that landscape is not easy to drive. So rain, you can get stuck back there. So we canceled that trip. But we made plans for this trip coming up this weekend, Memorial Day weekend. We have heavy rain. It's a little bit different. The landscape is like we're driving into a pretty nice campground that's pretty close to a city and then hiking. Um, and he's thinking about not, not going uh, because the weather's going to be bad. So my question to you is, like, does the rain stop you from going out does it change your plans uh i've always kind of had the mindset that once i make the plans <laughs> i'm just gonna go for it like uh, the weather's not gonna stop me it that's it, it's memorial day weekend i can spend it inside in the while the rain is outside watching netflix or something or i can be in some beautiful landscape uh enjoying the rain and i guess uh you know, my plans might change, especially with this hike that's coming up through a canyon called Waterfall Canyon. I think we might have some flash flood problems, so I might adapt my plan. Uh, but yeah, the rain doesn't stop me. There's that age old saying, like, there's no such thing as bad weather, only bad gear. So let me know your thoughts. Like, there's advantages, I think, to hiking in the rain, less people. I mean, my buddy's already <laughs> trying to cancel, so obviously, like, you know, people are, are dropping like flies. Maybe you have an RV, so you just do the RV thing, and it's really easy for you. But, uh, yeah, I feel like being in Idaho, being in the Pacific Northwest, it's just like you got to be prepared for everything. Um, that's why I got into the winter stuff. That's why I've, I've, I go in the rain. It's just like if you're, if you're going to be dependent on the weather here it just seems to me like you're not gonna go hiking a lot <laughs> so uh yeah it's an amazing time we live in so let me know let's get into this hike this was chalk basin this is in the awaihees awaihees back in the awaihees in a place called jordan valley which is kind of like this agricultural location We'll pull up Google Earth here and I'll show you. Let me go down in that corner, John. So this is the basin. If we zoom out here, whoa, we'll see where it is in the world. It's over here yeah. on this side of Oregon. Obviously, I live in Boise. It was about a three and a half hour drive. It's so funny. It's like, I think it was a three and a half hour drive, but the last 20 miles probably took an hour or so. The distance isn't as far from around here, but um, yeah. And I've done this, I've gone through Chalk Basin before um, on a real early assignment with Helfrich River Outfitters. It was my first time meeting Helfrich River Outfitters. If you've watched like the Middle Fork video, um, I went with them on that. There are some videos, like they're probably the first ones uploaded on this channel from this area. Uh, Chad and I did it. Uh, with them you go through these canyon lands you start in Rome Oregon and come up through here it's really really a cool float um, but obviously not everyone can float it uh, I was talking to another youtuber Gatewood Brown who does a lot of kayak camping I think that'd be a, this would be a really cool spot for that the rapids aren't aren't too bad 
Uh, but yeah, to get back here, you need a, a four wheel drive. Um, you can see all these pins that I have here. I really didn't know how far I was going to get in the truck. Uh, luckily, I just put new tires on it. Man, new tires. Whew. Uh, if you live in Idaho, having like four wheel drive, some clearance and some good tires can get you so many places that you wouldn't normally get to. Like I understand if you want to come up here in your Prius because gas is outrageous right now. But um, <laughs> like clearance, good tires, uh, doesn't have to be an expensive car, can get you, get you a lot of places. So we were able to make it all the way to this parking spot located right here. Um, I did notice the cars that we noticed in this area were actually parked right here. And um, this was a, a secondary hike that I had planned just in case because the road right here gets really gnarly once you come back into here. So I had planned a couple of different routes. Um, there's this one where you can park here and just do this really simple out and back. I had mapped out like possible campsites. Um, again, we were, if you didn't watch the video, I mean, watch the video. It's in the description below. Um, but we were, we were looking to fish uh, on the Hawaii River. Man, we'll get to fishing in a second, but dude, the fish were jumping like crazy out there right, right now. Um, so yeah, this was a, a first hike. Looked like people were out there. Probably the easiest spot to get to. That's why looks pretty. This was the second spot. So this was the one that like was described to me in a book was to start here, come down around here and hike up to here and then come back around and come out. So this loop was one I read in the book. Um, we had thought about possibly starting here, going around here, going all the way up around here, coming around the entire basin and back down. So this big loop was another one you can do. Um, but we were able to make it in the car to this parking spot you can even see it here. It's this like, uh, it's this little turnaround spot. So basically all the way to the end of the road. Um, if you Google map this, it actually shows up on Google maps. So, uh, yeah. And, uh, again, it's, it's super sketchy. <laughs> like it's, it's not a great road. Don't go there if it's raining, because, um, if it's raining, you're just, you're just probably going to get stuck. Imagine, I mean, Sarah and I were talking about it as we left, like, oh man, if it had rained hard while we were back there coming out, like going up some of the steep, just gravel rock things that you have to go up to get back out, um, you could definitely get stuck back here. And I was like, who would you call if you got stuck back here? Probably need to call your, uh, call, call someone <laughs> like that, you know, and have them call the sheriff's office and then. I don't know, go from there. So anyways, we parked here and then we kind of traversed over this. We were kind of looking, this is the big canyon at the end. We'll pull up the video here in a second, but we kind of traversed over this right here first and came down to this spot and checked it out. And it was really easy. And there was like kind of spots here. And once we got here, we debated like going over here we debated going um, just kind of across the landscape up to here to this spot, which would have been cool as well. Um, but having the benefit of the drone, which is cheating, I had seen this uh, this super cool landscape that I we ended up camping under over down this way. And so we decided to make our way down this way. So let's pull up the video real quick and just look at what I am talking about here. The start of the hike. So like this is the basin. You would come in usually from this side, the right hand side here, and you'll be looking at this. I think this is the road right here leading back towards the river. This is kind of like once you park that first canyon that at the end of the video we had a problem getting over. So we're parked like probably down in this bottom left hand corner. And this spot back here, over here, up in the top left, if you can see that, um, 
is where we like first went. So we started kind of over here down in the bottom left, didn't drop down into this. We went over it down to this spot. Here you could see the spot again. So we're parked right here. Here's the loop. You can see it up here. This is where the car is. And we traversed over this down to here, down to right here. I was kind of hoping this would have water in it. That's why I liked this spot. But yeah, we kind of just came over it, came down probably like this way. Um, and yeah, it's a little bit of a scramble. And then got to here and kind of walked over to this spot right here and checked that out. And we're just kind of kind of surveyed the area. I mean, there's a good spot of my, of my car with Sarah standing next to it. There's actually a fire pit right in the middle there that you can see, and you're heading straight. We ended up heading left um, to start the trip. This is again the canyon. This is spot one that we kind of went down into, so you can follow. We kind of came from over the other side of the ridge, but this was the spot we were looking for. This is way, this is the spot we, uh, spot we eventually got to. Obviously, like, I put this in because, you know, I wanted to put the exciting stuff in first. This is kind of Sarah hiking towards it. So what we did was... So this was our spot. We came down here and we were like, oh, where do we go? Well, I know over here is really cool. So we were kind of down in this little ravine. We actually ended up having to hike back up this ridge right here on the top and then hike across. And um, thinking about it, this was actually a good way to go. If you're gonna park here and go to our spot, it, it's a lot easier because we came out you know, this way on the other side um and there's this like really tricky waterfall like steep drop off right here on this side so if you park here there's two ways really to go like you could park over here possibly and start and go this way and and that would be easy because down in this little canal these little canals they're not they're not running you know right now that probably never like they're probably more like flash flood type creeks they're not really creeks that run all all year this is a very dry desert so you could park down here and just follow this creek bed that's a really easy walk it's flat and stuff like that it, i mean with descending elevation um if you park up here uh yeah the best way to actually get down to this spot is to almost come behind this thing this is actually not that bad of a climb from here to this ridge so we just climbed up to this ridge came across kind of looked down came around came behind it and started here and then took this little ridge line across this way towards the really cool i don't even know rock formation uh the penis rocks yeah i said it penis rocks they were penis rocks did you not notice that um <laughs> Sorry, I'm being silly. Where'd the video go? Oh, right here, sorry. Okay, so we're heading towards the rocks along that ridge line in this scene. See, what I say, penis rocks. Don't tell me those don't look like penises right there. Look at that. <laughs> look at that, even better shot of them. Come on! It's like, Mother Earth has a boner. It's, it's, yeah, that's what they are. But really cool rocks. Anyways, um, this is it from the other, from I guess the south. Uh, this is the Owyhee River. We camped right over here. Kind of right under the drone right now. Really cool. You can walk right up to these. We, uh, we definitely kind of explored them. Explored these little canyons and stuff like that. I took a bunch of drone batteries and was just like, you know what, I'm gonna fly the drone most of, most of this video. And there's our spot underneath it, great spot. We, uh, we kind of had to dig this flat to, uh, to, get it, to get it working for us, but windy, so it kind of protected us from the wind and uh, was right next to the river so we could fish. This is Sarah crawling down some of the some of the terrain you can see. 
my face. Okay, so I just shot a video about my fishing setup uh, that's going to be coming out next week. But obviously I do the Dunkara thing. Sarah fl brought her fly rod and we just kept seeing fish jump, 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 jump. Heard them, saw them. And uh, it was tough. River fishing is tough. We're, we're definitely newbies and it's definitely harder to, to catch stuff in the river, I find. Um, but I, I did get one. The trick was Sarah noticed the bugs that were, that were landing and being eaten. So I matched the fly and then I noticed they were, they were on top. I don't know what kind of fish this is. I think it's a, like a, a small largemouth bass, but, um, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I could definitely be wrong. Like this looks like a, a like a juvenile bass of some kind. Um, so we noticed that, that the, everything was landing on top. So I just changed it up put a uh you know you could put some dot what is it called like an oil on your fly to make it float so i went to a more of a dry fly setup and sure enough that little guy came up and took it right off the top so getting better at that whole fishing thing i caught the fish and then i was like all right i'm done i got it once you catch one i'll i'll, I'll go i'll go back <laughs> that was tough enough Sarah built the fire pit, and then Sarah, every time we go, wants to uh, tr always try to make fire with flint, and she had to deal with the wind, so she dug that pit really, really down deep for that. Luckily, there's a bunch of dry crap. She brought a saw. I don't know. I'm not a big fan of the saw. Um, <laughs> seems more like an injury risk, and then uh, and we were just pulling stuff out. Brett brought a saw all the time too. I don't. I, I never understood the th saw. And then sure as shit, here she goes. Got it. No cuts there. No edits. She uses this mad swede as the flint. But yep, in the in the wind, Sarah started started fire. And yeah, there's this huge plateau that's kind of around there that you can hang out in. Um, just kind of a really cool landscape. And uh, yeah, we'll watch through this video. Wildflowers are popping out right now. We didn't see any rattlesnakes, but there will be rattlesnakes down there. I don't think there's any bears in that part of the world, but um, like I didn't bother to hang my food. You're, you're dealing with mostly like coyotes. God. The Milky Way came out and then the clouds. Come on, clouds. Give me a break. Give my time lapse a break. Uh, mountain lions are probably in that region. But, and this is a major river that you're camped next to. Really cool in the spring. Oh, we had river otters that were a uh, mom and a baby right across from us. I didn't have the lens to get them, but they were eating those like uh, mussels and they slept across the way um so you'll see river otters out there this is kind of what you're hiking through really cool the texture of it is, is different it's very chalky it's very soft not quite like craters of the moon not like quite like hiking on anything else it's it's a little bit different so always a cool thing And then, yeah, we have this chasm to get back through. Oh, Sarah takes pictures so that we can identify them later, which is cute. But yeah, we had this huge chasm that we had to get through. So at this point, let me, let me show you what's going on here. Because this, this took us longer, way longer than expected because we didn't really know where to go when we were getting out. Um, so at this point... We've camped, we've hiked back along this way, almost back, pretty much back the way we came, up along this ridge. So we came back to this ridge and then came this way and um, we came around here. Like we really like followed this. Like I think we came like over this rock right here 
And I didn't shoot any of it because poor Sarah, it was kind of on the, the edge and she was a little freaked out and it was, it was definitely kind of slippery. And, uh, you know, I didn't have a problem with it, but, but I don't know if you have like small kids or something like that, maybe take the wider route, like maybe go back, back this way, go higher or something like that. Um, the problem with this kind of canyon is like down here because you, you would love to just follow this canal all the way back and it, it looks like it here from Google Earth but really when you get down into it like these they don't look like it from here but like right here and right here are some really deep really steep um, dried waterfalls basically and so getting around those it, it to get back to the car is tough we kind of thought we would just have like a straight line back and um, we didn't so we made it over so right here is that is that like really steep waterfall it's like right here down here so this was the part that we had to like get across you can kind of see it like so like this little circle right here so what we did is in that drone shot we're standing like right here and I noticed that we could go down into this little ravine right here, right in front of us. And then again, the waterfall's right here. We walked back this way, came around this loop, and came up through this ravine and around to here, and then came out this way back to the car. So. Again, if you're going from the camp spot, it would be like more like this. And then you come up through here. Somehow you kind of got to get through this part. This is going to be the toughest part right here. There is like a trail over here that we found, but it's like on the edge. So be prepared for that. But you would, you know, you can see it kind of has this steep part right here. Um, and the trail kind of goes this way. You can just... Just keep walking around if you're kind of scared and take the long way around. And then come up into this field right here. Drop down in here. Come around this way and come back out to parking. And we will just finish this live stream up with the end of the video. And I'll take any questions if anyone is watching. So yeah, we're, we're like right here and this is what I drop down into here and we kind of turn here and come around this butte. Whoa, that's weird. Sorry, I went, I went in reverse. Sorry, right. just fast forward. I've had worse hiccups on this live stream. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of like a, the best shot I can get of it, but you can kind of see like how that edge, so this is, the shot, next shot coming up is right here, and you can just kind of see it drop off right there. It's like it just drops off right there. So that's kind of what you're getting around. Whoops. And then once you get down into the canyon, like it's, it's smooth sailing from there. Like you can see, look at how nice that like trail is. That's what I mean by if you can follow these dry creek beds, they're the best place to, to hike. It's just those, like look at that. It's just like those those waterfalls that drop off that that are the problem like when you have a steep thing that you get up to and there's no way on the on either side of them or like sheer cliffs so you would have to backtrack and go around um, that's the issue that you're gonna face out there but that's truck basin it's really cool it's a really cool spot obviously you're alone um, if you're into rocks and the river and fishing all that is good. You can kayak camp down there. Someone hit me up and said, great place for snakes. So if you're into snakes, like that's always fun. And uh, yeah, there you go. Isaac says it's a smallmouth bass. I knew it was a bass. I was, I was gonna do Kepros, but this damn rain, man. When it's going to storm hard, then that cancels things for me. But if it's not too bad, then I either stick with it or change plans a little. Like this weekend, I'll just fish instead. Where are you fishing? Um, yeah, I think that's for us too. Like I made this, I made this like pivot. So we were gonna do this weekend like a, a big loop down into into like stay at a couple lakes and stuff like that. 
The first lake is this like big lake called Upper Palisades Lake in eastern Idaho. And it's like seven miles from like the campground with, with the toilets and everything like that. So I'm thinking because of the rain, we set up a really nice site in that where the cars and everything are. I have like a big like eight man tent. <laughs> you can get those really cheap, by the way, if you don't have an RV. And then we would just like kind of set up there and maybe we'll just hike out to Upper Palisades and like do some fishing. Maybe I'll, I'm thinking I want to stay out there at least one night. So maybe I'll stay out there and come back or something like that. We'll see how the weather is. But yeah, it's just kind of like changing plans with the rain. Probably go down to Swan Falls Dam or hit up some local ponds. Oh, I am also, I am going to a place called Swan Valley, Eastern Idaho, if you wanted to come check it out all right i'm super disappointed the suns got knocked out everyone like that was the team that i had bet on i thought it was going to be suns uh boston in the finals but um i guess i guess it's golden state now so there you have it uh enjoy the games i'm gonna go hiking and uh we'll talk more about fishing and backpacking on the next one thanks for watching see you next time and stream.